Well, we need to talk about Jamie Dimon. In order to have this conversation, we have the one and only Anna Kelly with us. How you doing, Anna? I'm doing great. So great to be here with you today. Yeah, one of the guys you know that I read articles when he's referenced in the headline is Jamie Dimon, Warren Buffett obviously being the other. Uh, but he recently released his uh, shareholder letter, 43 mm -hmm. pages, so not a short read. Uh, to net it out, he basically is, thinks the banking crisis is not over. This is not a, a tectonic event like the Great Recession, but more about a kind of like a slow bleed or paper cuts or however you want to kind of mm -hmm. reference that. Um, so, Anna, are, are, do you share Jamie's fear that this banking crisis is not over and there's maybe some more dominoes to fall later, you know, in the year? Absolutely. I absolutely no! I do. Yeah. <laughs> now, I don't agree with everything that he says. And and to be fair, I did not read the entire 43 page report. I did. I did read snippets of it from articles. And I have that on my list of things to go back and do, because like you, I do respect Jamie Dimon. Um, the governments respect him. He sits on boards at the United Nations, at the United States, um, et cetera. And so he knows what's going on probably better than you and I do, at least from, from the lens of yeah. high level political maneuvering with the Treasury and the Fed, et cetera, right? So when Jamie Dimon says, this is going to be painful, this is going to be like a slow, I, I forget his word, but he basically used like a pilot analogy. It's yeah. very slow, long drag on the economy. And he, like Warren Buffett, like Ray Dalio, think that this next 10 years is going to be a lost decade for returns, yeah. especially in the stock market. So, but generally speaking, he's saying, you know, this is not done. Inflation has more impacts. Recession has more impacts. The banking sector, commodities, there's more impact to come. And these things don't just happen and they're immediately over with and fixed. It, it treads through the economy and it takes some time. So from that standpoint, and you, you've heard me say this, you know, multiple times over the last few months, the pain is just beginning. Yeah. That is my belief. It's just now, beginning. Yeah. For those of you that are listening, I want you to go back and listen to our first video today because it's the encouragement yes. for you, despite the fact that we're now talking about something more heavy, that, you know, don't expect that this is just going to be, you know, this V-shaped recovery and everything's going to go back to normal really soon. This is the beginning and we need to expect and brace ourselves and prepare ourselves to be able to survive and thrive through, you know, a, a very slow period of, of recession and recovery. Yeah. I think there's a, you know, something else you'll read when you read Jamie's is he thinks inflation is going to stick around much longer than, than kind of average. Also no yes. fed rate cuts this year, which I actually agree with. Um, I think the one thing we need to talk about because we both play there, you more than me is larger commercial real estate, right? Yes. And we just saw Q1 numbers down 74% in multifamily. Yes. 14 year record. And funny enough, I was buying 14 years ago. So I remember what that was like. But let's talk about multifamily being down 74% and what it really means. Cause again, I think, I think that's a sign, but it's a very, very early sign. Cause, uh, you know, an opportunity is not today, it's, it's out there a ways. Right. So just to kind of tie all this together, because a lot of times people don't know and they'll ask me, like, what does the Fed rate have to do with the banking crisis have to do with commercial real estate? Like, how are they even tied together? So just to, as a very high level summary, right, real estate, like other assets that have variable rate debt, the values can vary substantially based on how easy it is to borrow in order to buy that asset. So the lower the interest rates and the higher the LTV that banks are willing to give you on commercial real estate, for example, the more people are going to be willing to buy. As rates start to go up and loan and lenders cut back, and instead of giving you 80% LTV, they're giving you 55 or 60, suddenly it becomes significantly more expensive to buy a multifamily property. And so if the seller wants to sell or has to sell, they've got to lower their price for the few investors who still can purchase those properties at the elevated interest rates and lower LTVs that loan that lenders are giving them. So what you see happening is the sales of commercial real estate are down 74% because the lending market and the interest rates have made it to where at the prices that we saw even six months ago, 
they don't, they're negative cash flow. You can't get approval for a loan, even at 55 or 60% LTV, and you won't cash flow at an interest rate that's seven to, I've seen as high as 11 and a half percent. So <laughs> commercial industry, and, and this is real time and stuff that I'm, I'm getting quotes for properties yeah. I'm looking at. Right. And so commercial 11. real estate sales have dried up significantly because of the price, the, the crises, the crisis of, of really, uh, rapidly increasing interest rates with very little time for cap rates to start to adjust. The other side of that, though, Michael, that not a lot of people talk about is the crash in transactions doesn't necessarily equate to a crash in value quickly. Because the beauty of multifamily exactly. is that if you bought it well and you still have debt that has some, some room before it has to be refinanced, you're sitting on assets that are cash flowing well and doing very well. And so sellers are like, I don't have to adjust my price. I just yeah. won't sell. So yeah. if you're in a quality multifamily property, I'm going to talk about multifamily specifically in a class A market, strong market, like you and I always talk about lots of jobs, good schools, low crime. You're not going to have to take much of a haircut on your sales price. You just hold the property. If you're in a tertiary market where all these investors chase, chased yield in, in areas that weren't great to begin with, they're really going to be hurting. But even bigger than multi multifamily, the biggest problem in commercial real estate, much bigger than even the multifamily that we're talking about, is in office and retail. Oh, and so office, office. Oh my gosh. It, it's it's a tremendous risk. So what is what does all that mean? And and why does Jamie Dimon say the banking crisis isn't over? Well, if you look at the what triggered the SVB collapse, without going into all the details, part of it was that they had these long duration bonds yes, marked as hold to maturity. They had to liquidate some, and so they had to mark to market all of the value and really take big paper losses for things that otherwise they could have held. Well, sixty three percent of commercial real estate loans are done by regional banks, not the big banks. So what they're holding on their hold to maturity books are commercial real estate loans. Well, there, for example, I think there's $2 trillion of commercial real estate loans about to come due this year yes. or in the next year. There's $2 billion alone just in multifamily in Dallas-Fort Worth, for example. So it's, it's huge. It's trillions wow. of dollars. And if these people have to refinance their debt because commercial loans are variable, you get a fixed period where you get interest only or you get really low rates. And then when you have to renew those rates or refinance that loan, suddenly we banked on 80% LTV, maybe 75% at a four or 5% interest rate. Now you want to go refinance that loan. They're giving you a much lower LTV at a much higher interest rate. You might have to come to the table with cash in order to refi that loan. And so the, the real Worry is that a lot of commercial real estate owners just walk away and let the loans default, especially in the office space. That's where the real heavy risk is right now because um, they can't finance with government debt like Fannie and Freddie at low LTV. So banks are going to have a whole nother swath of write-offs just like we had with these whole to maturity bonds, which can make a lot of other banks look insolvent and have to go to the Fed window. So that's really why this isn't over yet, not just no. the the hold to maturity bond situation. Those things may still mature at lower, lower values as well. So even with the Fed backstop, once all of these commercial real estate loans and bonds start to mature, if they mature before the Fed starts to cut rates, there's going to be a lot of ripple effects in these banks. Yeah. Again, one of the things that we brought up a month ago or so is I really encourage people to research the SNL crisis from the early 80s. Uh, it's certainly yes. not exactly the same, but it's certainly similar. What was the SNL Very. crisis base? Rates went up. People moved money out of banks. Deposits left. They went elsewhere. Real estate, this, that, the other. RTC, Resolution Trust Corporation, to deal with assets. Sam Zell, the original grave dancer, became a billionaire because of the SNL crisis. So, folks, stop looking at the GFC. Pull out Wikipedia, Investopedia, whatever it is. Go read up on the SNL crisis. I think you'd be amazed at yeah. how similar the setup is. 
Absolutely. Essentially, you know, interest rates went really high. It devalued commercial real estate, land and oil, which was primarily what was backing these loans. And as those asset values went down, the banks had to write down those assets and the bank started to fail. And it started the SNL crisis where lots and lots and lots of banks went under. And so we've created through Fed policies of easy money over the last 15 years, fiscal and monetary asset bubbles again, that when rates suddenly change and it's completely different than what everybody was used to, um, those those asset values have to fall. So there is real risk that something like that happens. The Fed is worried about it. The Treasury is worried about it. The big banks are worried about it. And they're all trying to figure out how do they stop this? Do they come in and, and allow some kind of special credit facility to refinance these loans so that they don't have to default? They've already taught, they've already had meetings to discuss that. We just don't know what their decisions have been because it hasn't been published. So, yeah. you know, this is something that's that's a real issue. Again, as a commercial real estate investor, multifamily in particular, I look at this to say, where is their opportunity? And there is opportunity. Most of the people selling uh assets today, multifamily, are selling because they really have to. And so there's opportunity to come in and and buy these things, you know, with, with really good Fannie Freddie debt that you don't have on other things, um, or really loan assumptions. And so buying a loan assumption can be a, a really great thing to do to continue to, to move forward and, and create value. But there is definitely risk in the short term of values falling, and you've got to be able to hold your properties to weather the downturn and wait until rates come back down um, in order to not see cap rates really um, increase in pressure values. Yeah. The biggest thing about the SNL crisis that I'll ask people to go research is it wasn't an event. It wasn't a quarter. It wasn't a year. It was roughly a decade. This is the slow bleed. This is the lost decade. This yes. is, you know, a thousand institutions were closed, but not all at once. I think a lot of people, again, Frankly, watching this I may forget. not have been alive or certainly not adults in the 80s. And I think you're missing out. Please go research that. And Anna, you're going to be a part of our event on the 16th where people get to come ask you questions, which will be so much fun. But where can they follow you? Where can they check out your recent Facebook post uh, that you put out this morning? I'm really looking forward to that Sunday. It's going to be exciting. We have a great lineup and super happy to answer any questions live for any of you that you have on the economy and what's going on in real estate. You can follow me on Michael's show every Wednesday on my playlist on his channel. You can find me social media on a Kelly REI mom. And if you need a coach or you're looking for consulting, you can find me there at reimom.com. Yep. Do her a favor, check it out and send her a note. Say you heard her on one rental at a time. Thanks, Anna. Thank you.